A viewer named Kyle dropped his Steam Deck and thought everything was fine, but then noticed that the bumpers weren't working. He watched my video about replacing the bumper buttons from an Xbox One controller, so he ordered some of those buttons from AliExpress and tried to replace them himself. Unfortunately, he ran into some issues. Kyle said he ripped off some of the contact pads and then tried to remove some of the layers of the PCB to find the connection for those pads. Unfortunately, he still couldn't get it working, so this one should be interesting. I paid $300 for this 64 gigabyte Steam Deck. Let's see if I can fix it. So looking down here at this, I can immediately see one problem. That is if you look right here, when I press on this button right here, it doesn't actually depress on the button on the board right here. So watch this. So that's not actually even pushing on the button. If you press really hard, it pushes on it a little bit, but just a general pushing on it doesn't do it. So I think the next thing we're gonna have to do is get this button under a microscope so we can check out this soldering, and see if there's any problems there. So far, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure if the contacts are fully soldered. So let's inspect it under a microscope and find out. I think we're gonna get the best angles under the scope if we just take this board off. It's also gonna make it easier to solder, so. We'll just take this off. And with a few screws taken out, we can remove this top plate right here. And that will get us to the battery connector right here. Just gonna push back on this. There we go. Now the battery's disconnected and we're safe to remove all these ribbon cables. Just gonna use my fingernail to pry on the locking tab. There we go. And then one little connector right here. We should be able to, to just pry up, I hope. There we go. Isn't there a little, a little more, a little harder than I thought it should be, but we got it. Now this should come up, I think. Got one locating tab up here. There we go. Okay, I don't see any damage under here anywhere, so that's great news. Okay, let's get this board under a scope and check it out. And looking at it under the scope, I can't tell if those pads are connected where they need to be. That button's taking a beating. I don't know if it works or not, but the front uh, the front looks like it's soldered on how it needs to be. So, I mean, that's good, but I'm gonna have to take this thing off to really see the back of this and see if it's something that we need to replace or not. I feel like we probably will anyway, so um, I'm just gonna get this thing off. Also, is this, is that the circuit trace right there? I can't really, oh. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the wire that goes to that middle post. This right here. Which goes down here, down here, down here to right there. And that goes under here to one of these places. Which then goes back on top of the board. Somewhere over here. But either way, I need to remove this so I can really see what we have going on under here. And for this one, I think I'm just gonna use hot air on the bottom side of the board. And that should heat this solder up and just let it gently fall off, hopefully without doing any more damage to any of the contacts, the traces.
Now I'm heating in kind of like large circles. That's to help soak the whole board so we don't get as much localized heat. If you get too much localized heat, it can cause the board to delaminate, um, also known as popcorning. Oh, there we go. It just pulled right off. Okay. And there we go. So it looks like hopefully this pad and this pad might be okay. This pad definitely um, was torn off. So we need to get some of the solder off though to really inspect it a little bit better. So I'm going to use some solder wick to help suck up some of that solder. And then we can take a better look at those pads. I'm going to be using some flux. This is just here to help the solder flow. Fume extractor on. Don't want to be breathing up these fumes. I can tell you that much right now. Here we go. Okay, and that looks decent. I think we got a lot of it up. Just need to clean it up so we can have a look at it a little bit closer. See what we got going on here. Okay, so it looks to me like we have one connecting pad right here. This looks like there's a via which goes through the board. And then we also have this one connecting right here. This one definitely was not connected before. As far as I can tell, this pad is okay. And I think this pad is okay as well. So I think what we're going to do is mount a new button in there, solder these pins on, and then this pin down to this pad right here, and then we'll run a jumper wire from here over to this middle pad on the button. Also, we need to make sure that this is not touching where it shouldn't be. I'm not sure why it looks like it sort of is, but I'm going to get that off of there and make sure make sure we're not having any sort of uh, shorted condition here. I might need to come in with a little bit of solder wick and get that up a little more. Remove some more of that solder. I think I'm going to have to. I'm just going to feel better about it if I do. So let's do that next. I mean, I think that's better. I'm just not really that happy with it though still. It's just too close, especially with the solder joint that needs to go on there. There's gonna be a lot of solder there, so I need to make sure that that is a nice clean joint and make sure that there's nothing touching there that shouldn't be. Ah, that's looking better. Okay. So I think what I might do is come in with some um, solder mask and try and put that on there just and just on the edge right here maybe because if that ends up connecting right there that's going to cause a problem i just need like the tiniest bit on here there we go All the way to the edge. Okay, I think I'm good with that. I'm just going to cure that with a UV light and then we'll get into soldering the button on. All right, and now we have this covered with a little bit of solder mask. So that will protect it from being soldered together where it shouldn't be. And we just need to get this little button on here. That's about how it'll go. So I'm gonna get this front part soldered, this pad and this pad right over here. And then we'll get started on soldering on the pads on the back. 
So again, I'm gonna come in and add some flux and then get those soldered on while I push down on the button. And that should get it soldered on nice and solidly. I'm gonna use my dental pick to apply the flux just cause I can more easily control how much goes on there using this. Usually I'm a fan of just putting a ton of flux on, but in this case, I don't want to get a ton of flux up inside the actual button. So I try and uh, control the amount I put on a little better. And I'm gonna change the angle a little bit so I have a nice angle for my soldering iron to work. I'm gonna try my smallest soldering iron tip first, just because it's easier to get in these tight spaces. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on the button. And come in and solder that on. I got it soldered to the button, just not to the board. It's because we need to get some more heat on the board. Still not. Okay. So I'm going to come and... Oh, yeah. I'm not sure this small iron is going to be able to get enough heat down here. Yeah, it's kind of like sticking a little bit. Bummer. Okay, so I need to use my larger iron so I can get more heat on that joint. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna come in with my wire. This is a coated wire, so I need to burn the coating off so the solder will stick to the wire part. Okay, that's probably about good. Now we need to stick it to this middle pin over here. Right there. Okay, and then we need to go about right here melt the coating off of it here. I'm going to put some solder on this circuit trace down here so it's all ready to 
stick to the solder on the wire. Almost there. I'm rubbing my iron back and forth a little bit just to help that coating come all the way off easy. And there we go. I'm just going to use a pair of side cutters to cut that off. Now I'm going to come in, test that joint. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, now we got to clean it off and see how we did. Okay, and that looks great. Need to make sure, yeah, there's no solder. There's no solder connecting this pad to this wire, so that's good. It looks good on this side as well, so I think we're good with that pad right there. Okay, the button's on there nice and solidly, so I think we call this soldering job done. Let's get this installed back into the Steam Deck and see if it works now. All right. That should be how it goes. There we go, okay. So the button does press. That feels good. I, th I think that might work as long as that button, as long as the integrity of the board is good. I think that'll work. So I'm gonna get the screws put in here and the battery hooked back up so we can give it a test and see if that's gonna work for us. Okay, and it is starting up. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta get this all set up and then we'll get the testing done. All right, and we got a bunch of the buttons tested to make sure it's all working. Let's try this left L1 button and see if it's fixed. Oh no, it's not fixed. Ah, uh, that's a bummer. So neither of those buttons work at all. So it looks like basically all the other buttons work. But unfortunately, not L1. So I'm going to have to take this back apart and take a look at that circuit better and see if we can figure out why it's not working. So next, I'm going to check these button pins and see if we have any shorts. So this pin and this pin look to be connected to the ground plane. So this is the ground plane right here. So we should get a beep over here and over here. I don't believe we should get a beep in the middle though. Oh, we do get a beep in the middle. Okay, that could be a problem. Let me check the other one real quick here. So I don't know if this button is on here correctly or connected to the right uh, circuit traces either, but let's just check and see what we get. Okay, continuity there. Continuity there. No continuity in the middle. Okay, that's what I thought we should have. So I think the problem is, actually, I don't know what the problem is. There's some sort of problem that is creating a path from the middle pin to ground when it shouldn't be there. I think I'm gonna get this back under the microscope and just recheck all of this solder work. See if I can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, and looking over here, I think I might have this wire soldered to this part of the board, which is ridiculous. I thought I checked that, but apparently not well enough. So I'm gonna come in, desolder this wire, solder it more up on top of this pin, and then we'll have a look and see if it works a little better and if that short is gone. Okay, now I know for sure there is no connection to this ground pad here. I think that was the problem though. Let's get our multimeter out and retest. So we should not hear a beep when I touch this middle pin. 
Ah, we still do. Hmm. Okay, let's disconnect the wire and clean as much solder off as we can. See if that'll do it. I'm not sure why that's not, why that's uh, showing a short to ground right there. It is possible with all the digging around that was done on this board that that caused, you know, some of the layers to connect, but Okay, wires disconnected. Now let's see what it does. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it seems like this middle this middle um, pad that's under this is connected to ground. This is definitely not. So I wonder if this middle pin isn't supposed to be connected to this, what looks like it used to be a pad. Maybe that's the part that was dug away and maybe that is not supposed to be connected. Maybe there's just supposed to be a connection between this and this down here. That would be easy enough to test. We can just bend this middle leg up, reconnect that wire, and then give it a test. Where'd my wire go? And I can't find it, so new wire it is. There we go, we got the coating burned off pretty good. And there we go. Just one more connection here. Okay. And here we go. One probe on ground. That's what it should do. Now that connected there, when I press this button, we should get a beep. Oh, if I can press it while I'm, while I've got these things on both these, these buttons here, or these points. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. We get a beep when we press the button. Now, I'm gonna install this into the Steam Deck so we can test it again, but once we test it, if it does work, we need to come through and put a coating underneath this wire and this pad to make sure that these two don't connect when they're not supposed to, which is pretty much never if this is a ground plane down here. So let's get it tested and then we'll, I'll do some more work on this, probably off camera, before we get to the button on the other side that also needs to be fixed. Okay. Got that all installed. Let's test and see what happens. Oh, there we go, it lit up, yes! So that tells me that that button's all working. I've still gotta do a little more work on it, but for now, let's move on to the button on the other side and see if we can get that one working. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just add some conformal coating over here, just so that can be drying while we do the other side. There we go. So now that will get under and create a uh, separation between that one pin and the ground plane. So we won't have to worry about that on that button. Now let's get this board out so we can have a look at the right side button. And just like that, that board's out. Now let's get it under the scope and inspect those buttons and the pads. Now the board on this side looks like it's in much better condition, but we need to get this button off so we can make sure this pad is still on here and connected correctly. So I'm gonna do that next, then we can inspect. So again, just heating up the bottom side of this board and gonna let the button just fall out. The last one I kind of pulled on a little bit. I'm not sure why I did that. I don't like to do that. I like to just kind of maybe wiggle it a little bit and just let it kind of fall out on its own. Solder's get melted already, so. 
There we go, just like that. That just makes sure that I'm not pulling on the button and pulling pads off the board when I do that. Now we have those three pins soldered on nicely, mounting pin over here and mounting pin over here soldered on. And it's time to install this button and board back onto the Steam Deck and see if it works. Before we do that, let's just do a quick test to make sure the button works. Okay, that's what should happen. Perfect, I think that's gonna be a winner. Now I'm testing out some new flux. Someone commented or someone sent me an email a while back and said that they were developing a solder flux that is non-toxic. And that to me sounds amazing. So I'm kind of testing it a little bit today. I need to do a lot more testing on it to see how it does over the long term and how it does with different soldering jobs. It's um, very liquidy. And so I was a little bit worried that it would be just too liquidy. I don't really like the liquid flux because it doesn't last long enough for me when I'm soldering. It'll just evaporate too quickly when you heat it. And so I was a little worried about that, but this actually, this flux so far actually stuck on the board quite a while, even when I was soldering it. So I actually, I have high hopes for it. Um, if I end up liking this and, you know, it's something I feel like I can recommend, I'll definitely let you guys know what I'm using once uh, I test it a little bit more. And I don't know if they've even officially released it yet. So once we get that all figured out, I'll definitely recommend it if it's something that I like. Because I love the idea of a non-toxic flux. It, I use a fume extractor, but it always bothers me, you know, even just the fact that I still do get a little bit of smoke inhalation here and there. And that's just so bad for you that I want to avoid that as much as possible. So hopefully, this flux works out and it's something that I can recommend. I would love that. Okay, now we need to check and see if this will actually depress the button when we push it. Let's see if I can get a view of that for you. Oh yeah, totally does. Okay, let's get this thing turned on, you know, after we reconnect the battery. Let's get it turned on and give it a test and see if we fixed it. Okay, here we go with the test. Let's test the left one. Previously worked, and the right one. Ah, there we go. So this Steam Deck is all fixed up, and Kyle, you almost had it. A little bit of testing with the multimeter, and you probably would have had this one fixed on your own, but I commend you for trying. If you want to see a video where I try to fix a Steam Deck that was broken even worse than this one, I'll put that video up on your screen now, so you can come hang out with me and see if I can fix it. Thanks so much for watching today. If you want to check out our merch, go to tronicsfix.com, and I hope you have a good one.